Hey everyone, hope you all had a great Christmas. Today I'm gonna to work on the BMW i4 for a cleanup, it's, it's way overdue. We got, in Minnesota here, we just get, roads just get totally trashed with salt and sludge and all sorts of other crap. So this thing is not looking very pretty. And I thought what I would do is, cause I get comments once in a while that ask what uh, tools, what cleaners I use. And I thought today would be a good opportunity to not highlight so much going from a dirty car to a clean car, but the products and the process that I have, I guess, found over the last 20 years of detailing cars as a hobby, not a profession, but I, I enjoy using. I, I've used anything from the retail stuff like Meguiar's to Turtle Wax to Mother's, and then some non-retail stuff like Zano and Griots. I think Griots you can get locally or get, in, get out like AutoZone now or something like that. But, but anyway, I thought I would highlight my favorite products that I use on each part of the car, from the wheels to the paint to the windows to the inside, as well as show, uh, I guess, how and why I do what I do. So I thought that would be kind of fun to do. So sit back, relax. I'm gonna try to make this as entertaining as I can while also highlighting some of these products that I have found and favored over the last, like I said, about two decades. So just like with every wash, I always do start with the wheels because they are more often than not like just the dirtiest and there's just sand like off of the tires and the wheel wells and inside the barrel of the wheel. These things are just always really dirty and I just, I don't know, it just comes, it's, it's been a habit of mine since I was like 15 years old just to start with the wheels. We'll start with that. Now, what I do think is pretty important is having a designated bucket for, and well, I'll show you the other two later, but you know, designated bucket for the wheels only. And then, you know, another bucket for rinsing the mitt, another bucket full of clean soapy water for the paint, just so you, you try to prevent or limit or restrict the amount of crud going from you know this panel to this panel to this panel obviously i'm not going to take anything from the wheels and take that same water and put it back onto the paint you're just going to end up pulling everything off of the wheels and it's either going to rinse to the floor or it's going to go in your tools it's going to go back into the bucket and yes i do have grit guards for those who don't know what grit guards are as far as farm you have these things that you put at the bottom of these buckets and they sit on the bottom of the bucket just like that and in theory all the grit and crap that you pull from whatever it is you're washing should come through fall in between these little grit pieces or these little uh, grate pieces and sit on the bottom of the of the bucket so you never are going to pick up stuff in theory but you can continue to uh, increase the chances of not scratching or not cross contaminating or whatever it is by just having multiple buckets. So I just have this filled with hot water and some car shampoo and I just use that because I want to have some lubricant and plus when I, when I dip my tools back in here, you know, they're going to sit for a little bit and I want them to be in soapy, hot soapy water. Just froth that up a little bit. A lot of these tools, there's this, there's this dude I found on YouTube named Matt. He owns a store called Obsessed Garage. He's kind of like me where he's just, or actually maybe I'm kind of like him where I, I mentioned before, I've been doing this for about 20 years and I have found certain items that I like more than others. And you know, so I've gone through, like, like I said, the, uh, the Meguiar's, the Mothers, the Zeno, Griots, um, Adams, CarPro, uh, what's that one starts with the G? Whatever that one is. There's lots of options that you can get on the retail side and on the online side. I find that the online stuff is a lot less, for me at least, there's nothing wrong with the retail stuff I get from Target or Walmart, but the stuff that you find online seems to have better results, I guess is the best word you could say. So you gotta pay for freight and stuff like that, but I mean, anything you can buy online that you can't buy in stores, is usually a reason for that. It's, maybe it's, I don't know why, it's, it's more expensive most of the time, but I just happen to like the stuff that I'm using right now. So I, in, in my designated wheel bucket, I got from Obsessed Garage, yes, I'm one of those nerds that had to get this because it looked cool. I got my, my designated wheel bucket, my designated wheel dolly, as well as a bunch of tools. So this is a wheel woolly that I got from Griot's Garage probably 10 years ago. This thing lasts a long time. Unlike that one I got from Obsessed Garage that worked really well for all. Maybe it's my buddies using it that, that ruined it, but the, the tip of it doesn't, let me grab it up. The tip of it has worn off. So if I were to enter or, you know, insert this into the barrel of my wheel, the chances of me scratching it, I think are pretty high. So this thing is, I should just toss this out or give it to someone because I'm not ever going to use this again, which is unfortunate because Matt from Obsessed Garage really likes these and maybe I did something wrong. I never keep it in the bucket. I don't keep it stored down. I don't know what the issue is. So that wheel 
barrel cleaner was from Obsessed Garage, but this is from Griots, and this has lasted a lot longer, and it's padded all around. So I use that for the inner barrel of the wheel, as well as the wheel wells. And I use this four finger lambskin bit that I also got from Griot's Garage probably like 15 years ago. Uh, this one's not 15 years old of being used. I just opened this one up probably six months ago. Because they don't last forever, right? They get, you know, used and abused. But these things work really well. But then, and then I got this tire detail brush from Obsessed Garage. And for a solution, I found that the Adams wheel and tire combo, it's a cleaner does both wheels and tires, works really well. I used to do, I used to separate them and I would have like a designated tire cleaner and a designated wheel cleaner. Wanting to kind of simplify or clean up my little cabinet there, I found this and it works just as well, if not better than those two that were separated. So I think the Adams tire and wheel cleaner is currently from everything I've used is the best on the market. Keep in mind, all of this is uh, subjective. It's all my opinion. That I'm, there's, there's lots of good stuff out there. I just want to share with you all what I use, what I have found to work the best. And uh, that's what I'll be using in today's video. So with the wheel, start with uh, rinsing as much of the crap off as possible. See all the salt and stuff. Is I do use this periodically. Sometimes I'll use just a nice detail brush for like lug nut areas or even maybe up in here. I'll throw that in there as well. So you want to make sure you get a nice thorough amount of your, whatever cleaner you're using. In this case, it's the Adams wheel and tire cleaner. See how nice and black these tires turned out? I, all I did was rinse them. And all that salt and crap came off. That's that Gion tire dressing that I'll show you guys later. Make sure you get a good amount on there. And this has a, a additive in it where it, it eats away at some of the iron deposits. So, so, I, so I clean the tires before I clean the wheels. I try to use this stuff as to just kind of eat at that for a little bit. That makes sense. See that okay? So this tire brush you can be found on Obsessed Garage's website. It's just a very pretty, not, not it's not gonna do a lot of damage, but it's, it's, it's a nice stiff brush. That's what you want when cleaning your rubber. So you wanna get off all the old oils and any stuff that's left on there from just driving it. Next I take my four finger mitt. And I go around the outside. And I, as I'm doing this, I'm kind of rotating it. So now I'm using a fresh area of the four finger mitt. And I kind of do this differently every single time, but sometimes I go spoke by spoke. And I'll do just the face of it for now. And I always start at like the 12 o'clock spot so everything drips down. I'm not bringing dirty water out. And just like washing your paint, you want to be really thorough with it, but dump your, your mitt as often as you can. I like to do it about every one or two or sometimes three spokes, depends on how dirty the car is. And as I'm doing this, I make sure I get this around as much as I can. That's one thing I like about the four finger mitt is that I'm able to get in these crevices. And any crevices that I can't get into, you know, I can always take this detail brush and kind of go through it. Like if I miss, if this is too deep for my fingers, I can take this little brush and kind of get, get in there a little bit more. But having good tools is probably the, the best thing you could do for detailing your car. And then I'd say it's the product that you're using. Once I'm done with the face, let's do the inner barrel. Same thing, start at that 12 o'clock position and try to scrub as much as you can. A lot of times the calipers are too big. That's why that one brush worked really well because I could get in between here, no problem. But with this guy, it's a little too thick. So I need either a, a small one or I just do what I'm going to do here and just not do you know, that area, which 
I'm not crazy about, but hopefully I can get it next time. All depends on where I stop. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll clean the wheel wells. I just take the same woolly after I dump it fresh and scrub it across the... This has plastic in the front and I think carpeted in the rear. So this cleans up pretty easily. Let me get some of the suspension components. And that's basically it. too is if you can take your little detail brush uh, I got mostly with the with the forefinger mitt but anything I miss like, like what's behind this spoke uh, get your caliper pretty good kind of like that and that's one okay we'll do it one more time on the back wheel First start with rinsing away as much of the, the crud as you can. And this has the carpet in the back, so you need to spend a little bit more effort blowing this out. You can see the floor down here. See all that crap down there? That's just coming off of the carpets. Take my now clean tire brush. So sit in a soapy bucket. Clean the wheels, the tires in. It's got a brown coming off, and then this is how that looks. Dirty. The outside of the wheel, the face of the spokes. That gives enough time and whatever for the soap to kind of work its way around the wheel. One thing I don't like about these wheels is the amount of crevices on them. Like right here where I'm scrubbing, right here. That's a pretty good size. Yeah, that's a pretty good size little pocket that I find dirt in every time I clean it. <laughs> it's almost like I miss it, but I know I'm, I know I'm getting it. And then we start over here. So this again is just car shampoo inside my bucket in combination with the Adams wheel and tire cleaner sprayed on the surface of the wheel to help eat up some of the brake dust and iron and whatever else comes off the rotors. I really don't like gloss black wheels but whatever that's what I picked so inside those lug nut spots I was more thorough with the four finger mitt on that wheel. So I didn't have the need to do that on this one. You can reach in here a lot more because this is a smaller caliper and rotor. So I'll get in there. I don't think I'll be able to fit the woolly in there, but get what I can. shield back here that this thing keeps catching on. Oh, I can get in there, sort of. Alright. Now 
knock off some of the crab on the wheel wells, on the carpet on the wheel wells. I'm not going to be able to get it all, but do what you can. that on the next side then we'll go to the exterior. All right once I'm done rinsing off the wheels after cleaning them I will go around and I'll do a pre-rinse on the outside of the car. Now one thing I want to highlight here real quick is this is a product that I'm going to show you guys later in the video but watch how well all of this crap comes off. Here I'll try to brush it real quick so you can see how caked on there it is. I don't know if you can hear that. All this salt. Hear all that? It gets even worse when you get to like the lower areas and in the back. So I'm only doing that by the way because I have this whole car is clear wrapped. But one of the items that I use, again I'll show that later on in the video, watch how well this reacts just to being rinsed off. That is a real quick pass. You can see, like, even if that were to be like a rainstorm, for example, you can see the before and after from one side to the other from just rinsing it off. Same thing over on the other door. See how well that looks? Anyway, after you do the wheels, what I like to do is give the outside a real thorough rinse. Not necessarily from top to bottom, but as long as I'm thorough enough to get the whole thing, that's all that matters. Some detailers will argue that doing a pre-rinse like this isn't necessary because you might as well just dilute your soap, which is not, I mean, I guess it technically is sort of what I'm doing, I meaning taking the cleaning properties away from, from the soap just a little bit. But in reality, you saw that door, I'd much rather prioritize knocking off as much crap, salt, crud, whatever it is from the paint before my mitt touches it then then letting the soap do that if that makes sense because i'm just going to end up rubbing that stuff into it. the soap will catch it and like you know pull it down and i want to knock some of that out of there as much as i can actually so that's why you have to do a real thorough job when doing your initial pre-rinse because that was just spray foam this outside i mean yeah it'll work and i could rinse that foam off again but it's kind of a waste i think Now is also a great time to get your door jams because you can clean these things pretty well just with just with a pressure hold, or a pressure washer. As long as you're careful, not a drop will get in. Finish up with the driver's side and then we'll be on to foaming it. See how the water 
it just beads right up again. Now not everybody will have this ability because these tools not everybody has, but I do have this undercarriage spray that I got from MTM, which is also where I got the, I think this is called a gun, but it's like a pressure washer wand, I think. They happen to be right in uh, Savage here. It's also who Obsessed Garage uses. So I just get the undercarriage, similar to what I would do to the wheel wells. help flush out anything that is stuck in you know, weird crevices or salt or sand that find themselves in places that doesn't belong. That will later on help decay or break down the undercarriage. Anything like that, it's good to flush out of there. Now that the outside of the car and undercarriage are rinsed, I'm going to go ahead and get my foam cannon ready. Now this isn't a necessary step for everyone. It is, you know, for the weekend warrior or someone who really enjoys washing their cars is a pretty, it's, it's one of everyone's favorites because it looks the coolest, looks like it's doing the most work. In reality, all you're doing is putting essentially like a blanket of foam over the outside of the car. There, there's several things you could do for that. Any sh car shampoo will work. Some foams more than others. And I have discovered uh, Adam's Mega Foam. You know, sounds, sounds like the name, it's Mega Foams. And, but I, I've used, you know, Ultra Foam, I've used car shampoo. I haven't yet used the graphene shampoo because I'm waiting to use up some of this stuff. But this for the foam cannon I've found is the best combination. So we'll put in about, put in a good, good amount. Probably more than I need. This is from MTM Hydro. It's the PF22 I want to say. Comes with nice little nozzle for the foam cannon as well as that, that uh, wand deal that I was showing you earlier. That's about, that's pretty flat right there. It's about, about that much product is what I put in there. And then the rest I'll just end up taking out of my, my wash bucket. Like the wheel bucket, I do have designated wash buckets too. This is, the blue is for clean, uh, or just plain water. The red is for soapy water. So I'll just fill this up with water here. And the megaphone is pretty liquidy. It's, it's not as dense or as thick as normal shampoo. So you don't have to worry about it clogging up the foam cannon at all. I'll give that a nice mix. So it's up on the bottom, ends up coming to the top and vice versa. Throw in the nozzle here. And there's a couple settings on this guy. If you want, I don't know if you can see now that I got it all soapy, but there's a, there's a positive and a negative indicator on here. All that does is uh, how much, how quick you're gonna consume this and how much foam you want to put into the into the nozzle here. So I always put it on the most positive side. So it's all the way out. And then you can rotate this to be either horizontal or let me do this way, horizontal or vertical. And then this right here controls the fan width. All the way open like this is going to be a very narrow fan. All the way together like that so it's a more wide or broadcasted fan. So I'll take that Adam's mega foam and I'll coat the outside of the car. And I usually let this stuff sit for a couple minutes and I do not rinse it off. I see a lot of people, a lot of detailers, they put on one layer of this, they let it sit for five minutes and they rinse it away. I, I, I think it's better to do a more thorough rinse with, the, with just plain water beforehand. And then I use, I keep this on the car because I want to use it as like a lubricant. See how nice and thick that gets. Other shampoos will be rinsing off the paint a lot more quicker than this. Like see how this is just sitting here? It will eventually draw any particles that I miss from the rinse, but uh, it's going to take a lot more time. It's going to spend more time on the surface of the paint than other stuff would. 
that I found at least. No, it's just this on the paint. A little bit coming off, but that's what you want. You want to carry that dirt away before you put your, your mitt on there. You do have to be mindful of how much you're using. You see I'm down to, I'm actually not using that much at all, but I have you know half a car to finish still. After I get it all soaked up, I'll either go around and do another quick layer, which is what I'm gonna do right now, or I'll take the little bit left, because you don't wanna drain this fully, otherwise you're just gonna be spraying water on it, then you're gonna be diluting all that soap you put on there. But I will go around and see there's some areas like this. Just go around and top it off, just with a little bit that I have left. This either goes back in the car, or it goes into my soap bucket, which I'm getting down there. It's not worth it for me to put this on here because I'm going to put more water than soap on the car. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of what I have left and I'll just dump it into my wash bucket so it doesn't get wasted. Okay, a majority of that soap is coming off the car as you can see. So I'm not going to, I, I want to add more soap to my mitt, not just use the soap that's on the car. So I'll take that ultra foam or whatever car shampoo you want to use and put a pretty good amount in there right on top of the mitt. Take my wand. This is when I'm going to froth it up and then start washing it. All that does is kind of mix in the, the soap. So now we're gonna do what's called a two bucket method. And that's where you use a designated dirty bucket, which I got this from Obsessed Garage, showing it because you don't need to go as out there like I did on here, or like what Obsessed Garage does. And you know, have color coded and, and named buckets, but it just kind of looks cool in this place. Is kind of for show a little bit and we want things to look like, but you could just use a standard like Home Depot bucket or those, those are Zeno buckets that I've been using since like 2003 or so. I just got these because again, they look cool. They're six gallons versus five gallons. They come with the grit guards and they do a really good job for me. Plus they're dolly together, which helps make, makes uh, push them around easier. So once I'm ready for that, I'll take in my credit bit. This is a really, I've used, you probably saw that, well you will. There's a green just microfiber mitt over here on the sink, right there. I've used microfiber towels and I've used microfiber mitts and uh, you know cotton mitts back in the day. But this microfiber and credit mitt has done a really good job for me. So I have a bunch of them. It's just it's, it's this nice padded mitt and it does a really good job. And it's really well made too. So I'll take my credit mitt. This is the XL pad, not the mitt. I should say I keep calling it the mitt. And I'll go across the paint. Every panel or so, I try to flip it, or every two by two area. So you probably don't see me in the videos doing this because I, when I speed them up and stuff. But I do, I'm constantly flipping and rinsing and, and making sure that my mitt is as clean as it can be. So you saw that, that was half of a hood. And I used both sides of my mitt. Now I'm gonna dip it in my, my rinse bucket. Rinse out, rinse away whatever I picked up, re-dip it in the clean bucket, and do the other side of the hood. So I'm trying to not touch the same area very often. I, I let the mid do the work too. I'm not, I'm not pushing down on the mid as I clean. 
And there is a good rule of thumb where you go from top to bottom. I tend to just kind of go around the car because I, I rinse and I clean my mitts so, so frequently. I'm not too concerned about picking up something from down here, for example, and bringing it back up because I know I did a really good thorough rinse prior to even putting hands on it. But also I'm flipping the mitt and I'm rinsing the mitt. And that's about as far as I'll go with that before I Sorry, Renzi, that's another good reason these six-gallon buckets are really nice. And when I rinse it, I don't know if you can see, I can't. I'm, I'm taking the mitt and I'm flipping it inside the, inside the bucket. Next, I'll just make my way around the car. We'll go from one panel to another. Here's where I like to go from top to bottom. So I'll kind of do the roof first, so most of that dirty water does drip down the side. But on the sides here, it's not, on the front, I should say, I'm not so concerned about that. And you talk about how often I'm, I'm rinsing and flipping the mitt because it's important to know that, and like here, I just took a whole bunch of crap off of there. This isn't brown, but you can tell it's dirty. I'm not gonna put that back on the paint. I could, I could dip it back in the bucket, sure. I have a fresh side right here without doing anything. Now that I touch way down there, I need a really thorough rinse. And just like the wheel bucket, both of these have grid guards. So anything that I'm picking up and trapping into the little bit here should fall through those grid guards. You can see this dirty bucket of water getting a little little grayish brown in color. So I'm gonna start squeezing the water out. I don't carry any of that water into the fresh bucket. And even though I'm in the fresh bucket, I'm still constantly rotating the mitt. Just so anything that is on there is falling off and dropping to the bottom of the bucket. You see here I'm going I'm stopping at this line. tool I use. This isn't necessary, but it sure has made things a lot easier. It's called a Big Boy Blow or uh, Blower Pro. Yeah, Big Boy Blower Pro. It's this little guy right down here. And if you have a leaf blower or even just towel dry, I mean anything you can do to dry the car, I mean do what you got to do, do what you have accessible to you. But I like to not put as much hands on it as possible. So I've elected to use leaf blowers in the past just to kind of dry a majority of it. Plus, you know, you go, I mean, you could soak your towel drying off a car even this size. But then I discovered this big boy blow, uh, pro blower, blower pro, I mean, there you go. Oh here, blower pro, big boy. And this is essentially a, a compressed air blower that heats the air as well, but it allows you to get into all these little tiny crevices, like all here. Instead of taking your towel and doing each one of those individually, you just blow the water away. Works really well. needs probably the most attention on the car. You can see it did a really nice job. This guy has a couple different settings, a couple different blowers. So you have a left and a right, and then there's a full speed and a half speed. I just put them both to full speed and let her buck. Watch the paint on the hood. Or in the windshield too.
Typically I would finish the process over here, vacuuming, uh, clean out the windows, the leather, coating it, but I'm gonna do all of that over on this side because I wanna take advantage of this and get a little charge action going. Now that it's about 95% dried with the blower, I'm going to take it to that final 5% and I'm going to use a drying aid on it, but let's get this hooked up first. Now a drying aid could be anything from spray detail wax or a, even before I blow dry it, you could, do, you could use a, God, what's that one, it's like a wet coat I think is what it was called, yeah, or P&S bead maker. Or uh, like Zanel Z6, or I already said like a like a detail spray, like something like this. But if I'm going to take the time and effort to put hands on it, I'm going to want to make sure I use a nice coating. I like using the Graphene CS3, the CS3 line from Adams. It does kind of a three-in-one where it cleans, shines, protects. That's what it's known for. Then the Graphene just has more, I guess, water beating inhibitors to it. Now, so you have this, which will also pick up anything that I missed during the shampooing or washing stage. Let's say there's a little speck down below that I just missed. You know, I put this on there and I use it as a drying aid as well as a cleaner. It kind of does a two in one. Well, just like that says, it's clean, shines, protects. Now, the stuff that I used that allows it to bead water so well was this. This is graphene ceramic spray coat. It's my favorite stuff by far. Everybody who's watched this, I'm sure you guys know what I what a, uh, a ceramic spray or ceramic coating is. You're supposed to strip the car of anything, you know, waxes, oils, give it a really nice thorough wash, and then you're supposed to put this ceramic coating in a very strategic way, not to, you know, get too heavy, not to, not to, not to get too thin in some areas. And it, it's, it's, it's a really great product, but it takes a lot of effort and a lot of knowledge and skill to apply it properly. Old ones, for example, as, as soon as you buff it off, after it cures for like three to four minutes, sometimes a bit longer. In theory, you're supposed to maybe potentially even throw out the towel that you used to buff it off. I don't really care to do that. I'd much rather layer layer a coating on there. So that's what that's what I do with this stuff. So I'll, I'm going to go around right now. I'm going to do a little, I guess, I'm only doing this because I have the time. I'm going to do a little secondary clean with the CS3. And then this stuff would probably adhere better if it were on a stripped, you know, stripped paint, nothing, nothing on there, such a CS3, but uh, I'm gonna go around and do this after I do one final cleanup. Just to get rid of that extra, like I said, extra 5% of water that the blower missed. So I'll show you what that looks like here real quick. All right, grab a fresh micro, put a little bit on the paint, I'm just gonna work it in. What this will do again this is a, this will clean as well as pick up any water that was left left behind from the blower it's going to be absorbed into the towel and it's going to be used as a lubricant to do that final drying on the car you don't need to use too much of this stuff just just like a detail spray you know enough to last the whole panel but not enough you're not you're not second, you know, I'm not washing the car for a second time. Again, you don't have to use this stuff. You can use detail spray or Z6 or PNS bead maker or anything that you'd like. This happens to be the stuff I've found to be very favorable. And as I'm buffing it off, I can feel it get nice and slick. Okay, then I'll just go around and do that to the rest of the car. Try to do one panel at a time just so I can. I'm not you know, overdoing it, meaning putting too much on the panel and I'm letting it dry and just go from one to another. And the main reason I'm doing this on the outside now before tackling the inside is because this stuff, like the coating I plan on putting on here, does want to be, does want to sit and cure for a while. I think the coating's like four hours, but I don't have four hours for it to sit, so it'll probably just be like an hour or so, which is better than nothing. But if you have the time and you do it on a weekend or something like that, you know, have that be your last trip for the day. And then the car can just cure your garage all night. 
Okay, now that that's done, I went a little quick, so there might see a little bit of smudging on the window, but I'm gonna end up coating that anyway. But now that that little, I'd call it maybe a half step, because I'm using graphene CS3, which isn't technically a SIO2 inhibitor, but it is a product that does have properties to it that do offer sort of a barrier between whatever you apply it to, whether it's the wheels, glass, paint, windows, whatever. It, it will provide some protection for you. I'm not, not as much as a uh, ceramic coating and not as much as the, where is it right here, the spray coating that I'm about to use. But it, you know, I could be just fine going home and having some, probably like two or three months worth of protection on this car. But I do want to take it up from that half step to a full step and put some more uh, protection on here. Now this is that same stuff that I put on when I first got this car. It cured for weeks and it wasn't uh, driven during that time so it had a lot of time to really harden up and get, get nice and uh, set for me. So this time I'm not going to have that much time but I'm going to do it right now before I tackle the inside so it'll at least get about an hour's worth of curing before I have to bring it outside. Now this stuff here is a, is a great solution for those who don't want to put in the effort or the time to put on a true ceramic coating. This is a spray coating. It essentially does the same thing as a ceramic coating. It doesn't last as long. It's a spray on, wipe off type of application. But as you guys saw, this thing was filthy this in the beginning of this video. And just from a rinse, this stuff really protected it really, really well. So this stuff, it is okay to layer, just like ceramic coating. I mean, you can layer that if you want, but not necessary. I like to layer this stuff because it does break down over time. It's not meant to last five years like a ceramic coating. And the more I layer it, the more beating action and stuff like that I will get. So this stuff, unlike CS3, you kind of want to, it, it works pretty quick. You don't necessarily want to spray it on the paint like I did with the CS3. You want to spray it onto a towel. Let that, I think they call it flashing. It takes maybe probably like one to three minutes. Then you buff it off with a fresh towel. Now this, you definitely want to do one panel at a time. So. Uh, that's, that's a lot. That's that, What I just put on there was enough for probably this entire front end. I'm going to take it and I'm going to work the crosshatch pattern I'll begin, that's being picked up on the, on the camera. It's going on there nice and thick. Obviously I put a lot on there. You can either use a towel like the one I'm using or you can use a, an applicator pad. I'm just using a towel because it's more, it's a little bit faster. And I can see this stuff flashing already. I know I said I, everything I put on there I can use probably on this entire front end, but I think I'm wrong. I think most of it got absorbed into the paint. Right the uh, towel. I'm just going to recoat it and do the other half. I like to do the outside perimeter first and kind of fill it in. Like that's similar to painting a wall. You know, you edge it where you cut in the corners and then you on the rest. You don't have to be as careful with this either as you would like a ceramic coating. Where it is pretty important to get this stuff layered really evenly. And this obviously works a lot faster. Just like that. Work it in there nice and nice and well. Put that to the side. I'm good to buff it off with a fresh towel. like that. If you work fast enough, you don't need to put a whole lot of pressure. You don't want the stuff to drop. It's not a wax. And this will take a little bit of time to cure fully. But once it does, it'll be almost like a layer of glass over the paint. And I'll be able to throw this towel and it'll just sheet right off. Hopefully, I'm guessing not, but hopefully by the time I'm done cleaning the inside, should be pretty good. It's okay. So I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna do that to the entire car minus the glass, and then we'll tackle that next. Okay, now that the exterior is coated, I'm gonna back here for a while by doing other side stuff. Next, I'm gonna do is get the mats cleaned up here. Now, what I use on these, you can just use soap and water, dish soap, or hand soap or even car shampoo but I'm bougie so I like to use stuff designed specifically for it I have the Adams rubber mat 
and liner cleaner. This stuff works really, really well. It doesn't leave the mats greasy at all or shiny and it does a pretty thorough job and it gets nice and sudsy. So let me do that for you. As well as I use the a drill brush on here. This just helps me agitate the sand and salt and stuff off of the mats a lot quicker than I would for, I would be able to with a hand brush. So first thing you wanna do is rinse them all down. This one's not very dirty, but it'll rinse it anyway. This, just like the car, will end up kicking up some of the salt and crap off of the mats before you end up doing the cleaning. I'll take Adam's Matte and Rubber Cleaner. Matte and Liner Cleaner, I should say. Now again, you don't need to use this stuff. This is just stuff that I found that I thought worked really, really well. And I really like it, so I'm using it one to show you folks. And it's like. Okay, so let's do one at a time. And here we go. While those are drying over on the rack off camera, since this is pretty simple, I'm just going to use a vacuum and clean up the inside. When we built this place, we ended up sourcing what's called Hide hose. The hose is actually inside the wall. Everything just runs right up through the channel that we put in. Now the inside is vacuum. I'm going to do something I don't do all that often, but I like to do it once in a while because I mean, it's not necessary as often as I do it, but this is that Adam's glass sealant. There is a graphene version of this that I haven't yet tried because I'm waiting to use the rest of this stuff up. But because I don't use my windshield wipers, this stuff actually lasts quite a bit. And I'm just gonna do, similar to the graphene ceramic spray coating, I'm just gonna layer another coating on top of my glass. So all this stuff is, you take an applicator pad, you apply it directly to the pad, pretty good amount about like that and then you just go in cross hatch motion on the windshield side glass whatever you want to do i even do it on the sunroof and stuff too and all this does is the same thing as the the graphene spray coating is it just adds a layer of protection so anything because i don't use my wipers is because i keep my cars pretty clean and maintained anything over really like 15 miles an hour, the, the water just beads right off. Then, and that helps with uh, like snow, ice build up too. This thing is electric obviously, so I'm able to allow it to preheat in the winter time. And there's been a few times where I've had some like pretty crusty snow on the glass. And after just 10 minutes or so of this thing preheating, that stuff thaws off and it, uh, just sheets right off as soon as I get up to speed. So you can see I go pretty quick with this because I'm, I'm just layering on top of an existing layer. But you want to make sure you put it on there nice and even. And what, what does this stuff stay? One to two minutes. Wow, okay. The, the stuff I used to use, the, what was it? It was the Griot's Garage Glass Seal. That was, that was like 30 minutes. So I'm just going to apply this really quick. Oh, five to ten drops. So I'm using a little bit more than that. But well, that's okay. I didn't realize how quickly this stuff reacted. I think that explains why last time I did it, I left it on there for half an hour because that's what I was used to doing. It's kind of a pain to get off. So this first half, this windshield, 
you know, it's going on probably three minutes right now. I'm being applied, so it might be harder to get off than it should be had I followed the instructions. But if that is the case, I can just apply a second coat and then remove it with that. Now that I know this only takes a minute or two here, I'll probably end up doing this more often than I, than I had been, just to keep on layering it. Yeah, see this is, I let it sit too long. So last time I did this, I let it sit for like half an hour. I'm gonna have to use some CS3 on a towel to get rid of this. All the CS3 will do is aid in removing of it. See? shouldn't strip it off the glass. Note to self, next time you do this, one piece at a time and remove it as you go. Because that quick few minutes was too long. That's funny, that totally explains why it was a pain in the ass last time. It's like I said, I'm used to the griot stuff that took like half an hour to cure. A little bit of CS3 as an aid seems to do the trick next thing that i'll do is i'll dress up the tires with a tire dressing such as uh, mud from ammo or vrt from adams or pretty much every place has a tire dresser what i will stay away from is the tire shine the stuff you see at like walmart in a in an aerosol can that stuff will end up cracking your your rubber over time the same, same thing with that foam like, like armor all tire cleaner foam stuff don't use that stuff it's i used to use it it does a good job but it's from what i hear it's not good for the rubber it'll dry it out and it'll end up cracking it that's just what i'm just, that's just what i hear so you want to use a, something something high-end like adam's tire dressing and this is what it's like to just spray it on your applicator pad and then rub it right in and this is what i had on here before when we were washing it and I remember I pointed out how nice and black the tires got just from being rinsed down. Now this isn't my favorite applicator. Usually I use a like a foam pad or, or something that's a little bit easier to handle. Not that this isn't easy but this is made for a larger piece of rubber. So I have to let them manipulate a little bit. But anyway that's the Adams graphene tire dressing. It looks glossy right now, but that'll dry nice and matte and it'll be really sweet looking. The next thing to do before the windows, the inside windows, is to do a quick detail on the inside panels, seats, dash, steering wheel, things like that. Now there's a number of really good interior detailers, even from Adam, such as, uh, well it's just called interior detailer or leather cleaner, or things like that. Meguiar's has some really nice stuff. My go-to is Zeno Z9 Leather Soft. This stuff does a really nice job. I've been using it for probably 20 years and it smells amazing. And they haven't changed the formula at all, at least the smell that I can tell um, since I started using it. So you can either do it like what I just did, spray it onto a towel, spray it on, right onto, the, onto the surface or whatever. This, this isn't very dirty, so I'm just gonna be doing a quick little, essentially a dusting with it and then just buff it off and It'll leave your your interior leather or even your plastics nice and nice and clean. It's not going to be greasy, not going to be shiny, and to top it all off, it's going to smell amazing as well too. I do put a pretty liberal amount on there. The driver's seat is the main one that gets used here. I just drive my kids around once in a while. This isn't the best brush for this, but this is an interior detail brush. Works good, but it's not very agitating, which is fine because I'm doing this to some pretty soft leather. And essentially all I'm doing is trying to remove any body oils or greases or dust while working stuff into the leather to prolong its life a little bit. So this isn't a conditioner by any means. But it does a really good job at preserving the, the leather. It's simple as that. And then I'll just cover up some of the fragile stuff behind the steering wheel. 
put it on there, then I'll just work it in like so. But I can't even see. And it'll give you a nice, soft, clean steering wheel to grip. What I'm doing my watches. Yeah. The very last thing that I do is always the glass because I spray, you know, the, the door panels and sometimes that crap can get on there. So my favorite go-to stuff is Adam's glass cleaner. I've used uh, MTM's glass cleaner. That does really nice. And I've used uh, like even some off-the-shelf retail stuff that work pretty good. But if you have tinted windows, you want to make sure that whatever you're using is, is ammonia-free or safe to use on film. Not all glass cleaner is, so make sure you pay attention to the label and figure out what is safe to use on tinted film, uh, tinted windows or not. Uh, if you have a, a, they call it a waffle weave or some type of textured towel that tends to work best, you can either spray it right on the towel or right on the glass, whatever you prefer. I'm just going to spray it right on the glass because I'm running out of time. And then before it drips down in there, just want to make sure you get it all worked in there. A good glass cleaner such as this will have a streak-free shine. You know, you want to be able to see through the glass. That's obviously the goal. And you want to make sure that whatever you use is nice and high-end. Um, I should just spray it on the towel on here, but I'm just going to cover up the dash, spray the window, and then wipe it. Oh, damn, I got my mirror. That's okay. They can be used down there as well. Glass is one of my least favorite things to do because even though I say this is street free and I'm using the best towel that I could, it's never going to be perfect. But I mean, it'll it'll do it'll do okay. It'll be good enough. I'm pretty OCD, and if it's good enough for that, I think it's fine. So I'll go around and I'll do all these windows the same way. Okay, once I'm done with the glass, then all I need to do is finish drying off the mats. Put it all back together and this one's done. Alright guys, well in a nutshell, that's pretty much my regiment that I do uh, weekly or bi-weekly when I clean any one of these cars or, or any car I guess it would be. But before I call today, just as it is important to clean your car, it's also important to clean your tools. So you want to make sure when you're done using the tools, you give them a nice clean because you don't want them to end up. You know, if I if I kept this in the bucket, I would have just wasted it because it would have ate the adhesive. So make sure everything gets nice and nice and cleaned out, like this guy here. You know, that's a lambskin four finger deal. You want to make sure you get all that soap and stuff out of here. Bring it out, let it dry. And then not just your tools, but also your, your bucket or tool of yours too. Look how dirty this is. Just gonna get all that crap out of there. Make sure you rinse the bucket down because there's gonna be more and there's gonna be grit and stuff. You see, look at all that grit in there. No, you didn't. I just touched that angle up. There you go. Gonna get all that crap out of there because you don't want that to be in there for the next wash. Same thing for your normal buckets. See, that's not that dirty because I ended up rinsing most of the, the crud off the car before. I like to wash these after every like one or two uses, depends on how dirty the car is that I have just used it on. But this thing you want to get it nice and cleaned up. And then hang dry and either throw in the wash or grab another one for the next time. Which, today's Saturday, New Year's Eve, I might come back here on Monday with a buddy. And wash it the wife's wig in here, maybe something in the stable. It all, it all has to be clean. All right guys, well it's almost, uh, what time is it? Wow, it's almost six, I gotta get going. I uh, hope you guys appreciated that. I, I get comments all the time asking what stuff I use, what's my favorite, how do I use certain things, what tools do I use, where do I get them? So hopefully I answered all that question, or all those questions. Usually it's 
Adam's polishes, Obsessed Garage. That's basically it. I'm not an Obsessed Garage fanboy, but Matt's got some good stuff. And, you know, same thing with his pressure washer. I did end up going with this Krenzel. This is a very expensive pressure washer kit, but it's, it does a really good job. All right, guys, I'm going to end this video here. Hope you guys all have a great new year. As always, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.